Well, thanks, Peggy, and uh, it's a pleasure to be back here. I remember the first uh, University for the Night 10 years ago, and I had the privilege to be there as well. Um, there are many reasons why you hear about India these days. Uh, one of them uh, is that it is the largest democracy. And uh, for more or less the last 60 years, since independence. We have had a system of uh, governance which has been fashioned after the parliamentary democracy. Um, but till very recently, till uh, as recently as 14 years ago, we only had uh, 4,000 plus elected representatives in national parliament and assemblies. But below the assembly, we had no local government system to form. Fourteen years ago, the constitution was amended, and uh, we now have a, a local government system for panchayats in rural areas and municipalities in urban areas. And now we have 2.2 uh, million and 4,000 elected representatives. So there is now some competition in politics. Since it is good for economy, we hope it is good for politics too. Um, but in some ways, politics in India, as perhaps everywhere else, has become the fastest growing family profession. And um, just to give you an example, uh, it is also, it has become a fine art. So some of our very famous uh, politicians had offered to assist the US election commission after the Florida fiasco a few years ago. <laughs> because what we specialize in in India is how to win elections. <laughs> so if we want to really provide roots to democracy, we have to deepen that democracy. And we have to, in a way, attempt to change the political culture. Now, most of the elections at the national or provincial level are fought on the basis of primordial affinities, caste, kinship, religion, and maybe political party. But there is hardly any discourse or debate on development priorities. So we thought that local government elections should be fought on the basis of issues which are locally relevant. So policy options on those issues should be debated by candidates. Secondly, the Constitution provided for a window of opportunity and one-third of all local government seats are reserved for women. So now we have uh, nearly uh, 850,000 women elected representatives in India, a vast majority of whom are, of course, uh, uh, semi-literate, uh, for making a transition for the first time from the kitchen to a public office. Um, so, in order to promote greater participation of women and excluded sections in the electoral process, in order to make sure that girls, when they reach the age of 18 and remain, are not married, are also registered as voters, because otherwise uh, registration of voters for girls after 18 used to be deferred if they were married. So there will be uh, voters in their new family, not in the old family. And in order to make politics focused on developmental issues, on policy options and that, we launched a series of voter awareness campaigns. And in doing so, we had to partner with uh, three major constituencies. Uh, Priya itself has had a lot of experience in working with other civic groups, but in the process, we developed a coalition of nearly 3,200 community-based organizations in those 15 provinces where this campaign has been launched. And uh, we had to work with state election commissions, which are constitutional authorities, because civil society campaign for political reform is much more nascent in India. And uh, so the state election commissions had to bless this campaign and provide us the legitimacy that was needed. And thirdly, we had to work very closely with the uh, media, uh, with a view to become vigilant about the electoral process so that uh, free and fair elections take place. 
And I must say that uh, not only voting percentages have gone up because of this, but also newer, first time candidates have dared to come into politics because they were provided assistance in filing their nominations, in campaigning, and to some extent, the muscle and the money power around the elections has been at least begun to be checked. But it's a long way to go. If democracy is the best form of governance we have, we believe that it needs to be further democratized and deepened in order to make it more inclusive. Only then it will generate the faith in ordinary people that democracy is good for us. 